my first response to that phrase, Homeland Security, has everything to do with people's paranoia. It was war, city bombing, it was revolution, it was all the time there was instability, uncertainty, anxiety. The question is how do you have a conversation about something that is secret? Yeah, I think that, you know, that, that repulsion attraction. I was literally inside these huge shipping containers shoveling out the confiscated items. What I'm trying to do is actually get people to question these things. This exhibition brings together the work of 18 artists from 12 countries, each of them addressing different aspects of the human cost of security and defense. The works in this exhibition are very timely and pose questions such as, what is home? What is safety? What is security? What we're really trying to do here is pull back the layers of social and cultural histories that exist here and take a fresh look at them through a lens of the contemporary issues that we're dealing with. The Presidio is very unique in the context of national parks. Uh, it's a national park site that is about transformation. It was an army base that was transformed all the way up until it closed and became a national park site in 1994. By carefully selecting and placing these artworks in these spaces, not only are we recontextualizing the artworks and looking at them in a new way, but we're also breathing new life into these spaces. The Presidio landscape is complex in multiple ways, insofar as it's a place where the desired outcomes of society at a moment were promulgated. So the office where the Japanese-American internment order in the Second World War was issued from is in the Presidio. It's now in the Bay School. At that time, that was perceived to be the right thing to do. Now we look on it with horror. But Homeland Security was on people's minds 100 years ago when these coastal batteries were built. But what does it mean today? And how can you extrapolate from a resource like this to the contemporary meaning of why these places exist at all? There was never a shot fired from these spaces. There was always an imagined enemy. So one has to think about where the fear is coming from. Who's telling us who to be afraid of? So I have done a huge amount of work looking at secret places and, and secrecy in general. So how do you have a conversation about something that is secret? Okay, if you're the American military, how do you make a place disappear? And you know, that you start to realize, whoa, there's really a lot of this stuff going on, and you just really don't know what it is. It really is okay. So I was thinking a lot about, about America and about um, Guantanamo and about these in, enclosures where you know, people are held in and, and how you can never really protect yourself. You see the fears that people have of others, of, of, of outsiders, of foreigners, either here or there, it doesn't really matter. the small object that we have taken away from us here, we can replace them physically, but we do have the, the memories that have been partially taken away. It's sort of a false ritual um, to make people feel safe. There's a, a very strong, violent element behind the, the guns themselves, the bullets, the shells, and so that there's a natural read that anybody who comes to it, whether it's a child or a sophisticated adult, sees the violent element, sees the religious element, and, and has to bring it together somehow. Why, how come? Because I'm asking questions, I'm not giving answers. What I want out of art is things that help us see the historical moment that you live in. So I'll we'll look at an enormous amount of material and I'll try to find allegories within that, that when you isolate them, they somehow stand in for a whole. They somehow tell a story. So that is absolutely a sense of archeology, span and this is a way to save some of those objects, to examine them, to re-examine what they mean, and really to provoke and evoke new ideas. I really want to provoke. 
People often talk about labor in this very negative way, but I'm always kind of surprised by that because anyone who makes things um, knows how much joy there is in making and that actually the real problem of our culture, or one of the real problems is this disconnect between our hands and, and, our, and our hearts, you know, that, that you have this real sense at the end of the day that you've made this thing. The essence, that's actually the essence of my work. It always kind of has been. It's been over a 20 year kind of exploration about labor. For me, it was always about the play and about the excitement of making things and making beautiful things. Because when I was growing up, I was growing up during an ugly time in my country. That has stayed with me to this day that when I make a painting, I need to seduce my, um, my audience. I want them to look at the beauty of the surface first. Then I will hit them with the message. That's one of the reasons I became an artist, is to play. You know, people forget to play when you grow up. And I found whenever I was doing art, I got lost like a little kid. You forget to go to the bathroom, you forget to eat, you forget to go home for dinner, you forget everything, you just play. And I love that state. It's just, that's all that exists. And that, that's a state of grace. When you put art with nature and with history, and then you bring the community to share in that and have dialogue around that, I think you can have some really powerful transformative experiences. The issues these artists are addressing are absolutely vital to our understanding of this moment in time and brings the notion of art about place to a whole new level. There's something about that that is about healing these sort of dark chapters in the history of the place. And, you know, if we were to shy away from those chapters, it would be criminal because they're stories that resonate with the world we live in today. You know, these things, they sort of come up over and over and over again, you know, and we're faced with the same dilemmas that the soldiers that were living here were faced with. <laughs>